this is a bilateral cleft lip repair presentation from Richardson Hospital. First, we start with marking in the midpoint of the columnar base and the right and the left lateral tip of the columnar base. The right and the left cleft side are marked to remove the sterile mucosa. In the junction of the sterile mucosa and the vermilion mucosa, a back cut is given. The marking for the back cut is made as you can see on the skin. After which, local anesthesia is administered. The dissection is started in the prolabial region to create the philtrum and to lengthen the columella. On the lateral aspect of the columellar base, careful dissection is done to cut through as this will incorporate the future nasal sill. Careful midline dissection should be done as the nasal septum should not be cut and injured as this helps in the growth of the premaxilla. Septal mucosa is cut and the nasal septal perichondrium is dissected which will be sutured to the nasal mucosa of the cleft side to form the future nasal flow. Prolabial mucosa is dissected and removed to leave the labial portion of the prolabial alveolus to heal by secondary intention. Now the dissection is started on the cleft side. The sterile mucosa up to the junction of the oral mucosa is dissected to denude the muscle orbicularis oris. The muscle is clamped as there can be bleeding from the upper labial artery that is undermining of the muscles from the skin and the mucosa. The back cut is made at the junction of the sterile mucosa and the vermilion mucosa. This helps the reconstruction of the tubercle in the midline. The nasal layer dissection is done on the cleft side to raise the nasal mucosa the nasal skin layer to elevate the transverse nasalis muscle alacunacy muscle from the attachment to allow the advancement to the midline high vestibular incision is made to raise the orbicularis muscles from the attachment which further aids in the advancement of the cleft musculature towards the midline. Similar dissection and separation of the nasal mucosa, nasal skin, transverse nasalis, alacunacy muscle and the orbicularis is done to achieve advancement from the other side of the cleft in a bilateral cleft lip patient. The septal dissection is performed to help the advancement flap to be sutured to the midline. Minor septal corrections can be done at this point. Before the start of the suturing, any bleeding points are checked and cauterized. The nasal floor is sutured with 4-0 Y krill. Once the nasal floor is reconstructed bilaterally, the muscle suturing is started. The muscle suturing is done to advance the right and the left side towards the midline by a key stitch from the right transverse nasalis through the nasal septum to the left transverse nasalis.
muscle. This is after the suturing of the nasal floor and the muscle suture. The excess columella tissues are removed. The midline prolabial flap is used to lengthen the columella and to create the filtrum. Now the muscle suturing is done from the orbicularis orus of the right side to the orbicularis orus of the left side. The prolabial flap is used for the reconstruction of the filtrum and the cupid's bow. The back cut are now forming the tubercle of the upper lip. Nasal sill is being reconstructed using the nasal skin and the columella base. The white roll suturing are done. The junction of the wet and the dry vermilion are sutured. The mucosal layers are sutured. The skin suturing is done with 6-0 vicryl rapid. The mucosal suturing are done. The muscle sutures are also done with 4-0 vicryl. After the suturing, we are supposed to check for hemostasis.